because we we see ourselves every day and sometimes I guess we deceive ourselves and say, oh, I look just like I did when I was 18. Well, which is not the case. I heard Brother B.C. Goodpasture deliver his last sermon. He didn't know it was going to be his last sermon, but a month later he'd be walking from his driveway, from his car into the house and suffer a cerebral hemorrhage and die. But that turned out to be his last sermon. And he said, you know, I look in the mirror <coughs> and he says, it's very obvious I've changed. He said, inwardly, I, I don't think of myself as 85 when I'm thinking. He says, I think like I always did. Well, that's the amazing thing about it when the Apostle Paul said, though the outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed day by day. There are not any wrinkles or gray hairs on your soul. There's none whatsoever. And if we love the truth and have given our lives to the study and practice, proclamation, defense of the truth, then we above all people on this globe, and it's true of whatever generation it is, we meaning faithful Christians, we have the greatest to be thankful for of any people that ever lived. Because we're reconciled to God. We're justified. We're forgiven of our sins. We belong to him. We're his children. The blood of Christ continually cleanses us from sin. We have the expectation of heaven when we die. How many people can say that in this world? A lot of people can say it, but they don't have the right to think it's the case. We ought to be thinking more about the things that are not seen. Because they're eternal. Paul says the things that are seen belong to this life. They're corruptible. But the things that are unseen are eternal. Well, just for a moment, in view of what I've said, why don't we try to encourage ourselves to see the unseen more every day? It ties in some with what Brother Buddy prayed a moment ago. We concentrate on our ups and downs and rounds and whatever in this life. But we're getting ready for the next life. And the way we get ready is to know the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth of God's good word pertaining to our salvation. And when we know it, with all the power within us, we give ourselves over to doing it. Knowing that's the way to be prepared. Now, nobody knows when Jesus is coming back, but we're told to watch. Well, how can we watch for something when we don't know when the world's going to happen? Well, we have to understand the meaning of the word watch, don't we? It means be prepared. And since I don't know specifically when he is coming, for that matter, I don't know specifically the hour of my death, then I'm to be prepared. I have to be faithful. I'm not to put off those things that are needing to be done now until tomorrow. There's a host of people doing that right now. They'll never see tomorrow. A lot of folks did that yesterday. And they never saw today. And that's going to be the way it's going to be with every one of us someday if the Lord doesn't come back first. Death will overtake us. That's promise pointed unto men wants to die and after death of judgment, Hebrews 9, 27. And so we need to be living right. It's a very simple thing to say that. And it's not that intellectually difficult to understand the Lord's will concerning what he requires of us. He requires for a person outside of Christ to come to a saving knowledge of God in Christ. And out of that knowledge will be formed his trust, his confidence, his belief, his faith in God, but not just in God and his Christ, but in the New Testament system that saves us. Now, there isn't any other system out there. 
the last will and testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is where our hope is. Thus we strive to know it and to put into practice. That means we repent of our sins. We turn from a life of sin to a life of, of loving and obeying God. And we're willing to publicly declare our belief in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and complete our obedience to Him by being baptized into Christ for the midst of sins. Now I tell you that is just not hard to understand. But the whole denominational world says we can sure help you misunderstand it. And that just is not the way it ought to be. You have your Bible. You can read your Bible. And someday, we'll be expected to give an account of the deeds done in the body, whether good or bad, in the light of this Bible. So won't it be wonderful to be able to say, I heard the gospel. I knew that it was the power of God to save me. And I believed it. And from the heart, I obeyed it. And I knew God forgave every sin prior to that that I'd ever committed. That he put me into the realm of the saved, where he puts all the others who obey the gospel. And therein I lived all my life serving him, growing and developing in the knowledge and practice of the truth of the Bible, because I put on Christ when I was baptized and I grew up in him because all spiritual blessings in heavenly places are in Christ, Ephesians 1 and 3. Forgiveness of sins, the hope of eternal life, being a couple of them. And then to be able to come to the end of this life and say, I've done that. I've done that. That's basically what Paul was doing when he said, I fought the good fight. I've kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid for me a crown of life, a crown of righteousness. And then he said, it's not to me only, but it's for all, for all those that love his appearing. Well, there's a lot of folks in this world that really do not think about the appearing of Christ because for most people when he comes, it's going to be in flaming fire. And he'll be taking vengeance on them that know not God and notice that obey not the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We don't want to be found in that situation. And we rejoice, encourage one another to obey the gospel and live within the confines of Jesus' authority. Because that's the way that's right. Can't be wrong. And it's the only way that leads to glory. And the judgment to be able to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter ye into the joys of thy Lord. So let's end this by saying, let's look at the things that are unseen through the eye of faith and know the truth of the God's good word that we can see them and not let anything stop us from seeing them and to lose the desire to be able to be with him someday. If you're a child of God and you've wandered away, we urge you to repent of those sins and confess them and pray for forgiveness. But if you need to obey the gospel, we invite you to come while we stand and while we sing.